Some devotees have asked me to make a comment on a proposed class action lawsuit against the ISKCON GBC for the changed books. We should oppose the change, changing of all of Prabhupada's books and the editing of his books. So we should all get together, make a class action lawsuit, sue them, and have original books and maybe even stop them from printing the changed books. And that's a good idea. However, I think that's a very, very complex thing for us to do because we're not organized enough to do that at the present time. That's one thing. The other thing is this kind of a lawsuit would be lengthy and costly and difficult. And difficult to prove because they're going to say, well, we're going back to the original manuscript and all kinds of things, which is uh, confusing for a court and it's even confusing for a lot of devotees in ISKCON. A lot of devotees are not quite sure if the changed books are a good idea, a bad idea, and so on and so forth. It's, it's a very sort of convoluted issue. Of course, Prabhupada's Quotes are very clear. We shouldn't change one comma. <laughs> we shouldn't change any of his books. That's another thing. I mean, eventually we might be able to prove that in court, and that's fine. But I think what we should do really is a much easier lawsuit and uh, a much easier complaint to make, which would include the changed books issue. I mean, we could simultaneously address uh, a whole bunch of issues if we just came up with one issue and that one issue, I believe, would be fraud. They fraudulently declared that Prabhupada had appointed conditioned souls as his successors. Why would Prabhupada do that? So that's fraud. And they fraudulently collected money for the Gurukula students, for the schools, and then the students uh, complained that they were not being fed and money was not being spent on them. And the leaders were living very opulently while all this was going on. So they were siphoning the money, self-evidently, from the school children's funding and using those funds for their own opulent lifestyles. That's fraud. They said they were gonna make a bunch of farms and cows, and instead they sold a bunch of the farms and the cows, in some cases, ended up in all kinds of disastrous and dire, you know, problems. So that's fraud. And changing the books is fraud as well, because they had no authority to change the books. And they had no authority to send thousands of devotees off to the Gaudiya Moth. They sent thousands of people over to Sridhar Maharaj, Narayan Maharaj, Babaji's and just siphoned, you know, <laughs> massive amounts of manpower out of ISKCON, which is fraud, and so on and so forth. So I think that would be uh, our issue. We would say that they fraudulently misused ISKCON, starting with saying that Krishna's successors are deviants. That's right there, number one, fraud, because that is not what Krishna preaches. So they claim to be preaching what Krishna is preaching, and the first thing they say is that Krishna's successors are deviants, which is fraud. Let's start with the first layer of illusion, which is that Srila Prabhupada says everywhere in all of his books and preaching that the successors to Krishna have to be pure devotees. They have to be in direct communication with Krishna, and they have to be people who are not falling into illusion and falling into illicit sex and so many other things, that was immediately changed. The leaders of ISKCON said, Krishna's successors are falling down into all kinds of abominable deviations. So this is fraud. This is a fraudulent misrepresentation of Prabhupada's teachings and Krishna's teachings. Krishna never says that my successors are going to be conditioned souls who are deviating. That's not what he says. And that's not what Prabhupada says. That's not what the Vedas are saying. So that's fraud. To say that Krishna wants conditioned souls to be worshipped as his successors is misrepresenting Krishna. 
it's misrepresenting Prabhupada. It's misrepresenting the Parampara, and it's misrepresenting the Vedic culture, and it's misrepresenting India, the culture of India, and it's an insult to India and India culture. To say that India's Acharyas are falling down into illicit sex and becoming drug addicts and uh, alcoholics and criminals is an insult to the entire culture of India. So this, this is what should be emphasized first of all, that the leaders of ISKCON are insulting and attacking the teachings of Krishna and the teachings of Prabhupada, and it's fraudulent to do that. It's a fraudulent misrepresentation of the teachings of India and Krishna and Prabhupada and so on and so forth. Now it's, it's worse if you consider that they're teaching this to children. If you're teaching little children that God has a bunch of successors who are debauchees and fallen down fools, then that's giving children the wrong idea of what God is and what God's successors are. Now the Vedas say that the Guru is the Shakshad Hari. He's qualitatively the similar person to God, Shakshad Hari, same as God. So the leaders of ISKCON are saying the same as God Guru is a debauchee, is falling down, is having illicit sex, is drinking vodka, is drinking schnapps, is drinking beer, is eating chicken salad, is <laughs> is having sex, is you know. So this is not a, a, a correct understanding of what an Acharya is, and what a Parampara is, and what a successor to Krishna is. Now, there are some devotees who want, even now, to sue the GBC over the changed books, and they're saying we should get a bunch of people to donate $100 each and make a class action lawsuit against the changed books. Okay, it's a good idea, but even when we had the original change books lawsuit going on, hardly anyone contributed money or support to that issue. It just it hasn't been something that enough devotees have been really concerned about. And uh, among the people who are most concerned about it, they don't have a lot of resources or money or ability to put together something like a lawsuit. So I think the fraud issue is would be better angle of attack, just go after the whole thing for fraud and then say, incidentally, by the way, they fraudulently also changed the books. Now fraud, you, you don't even need a lawsuit. You can just get a bunch of people to protest in front of a, uh, of a building or something like that. You can just go after them in a lot of other ways. You don't necessarily need a lawsuit. Uh, the change book thing you would probably eventually need some kind of a lawsuit, but uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe the books will just go into public domain eventually, or enough people will have enough original books, you know, available in other ways. So we'll kind of bypass them in, in other ways. Or maybe they'll even eventually start printing original books themselves because there'll be such a demand for those books. It's hard to say, but as far as getting people to give a hundred dollars each to a lawsuit it doesn't seem like a very practical or workable thing. It's just not probably going to happen. Suing them for fraud, I think, would be much easier to do. You wouldn't need such a big, cumbersome, drawn-out, complicated thing like a book changes lawsuit. Just, you know, fraud would be one, two, three, they're Krishna says his successor is pure. They're saying the successor is illicit sex and gambling and drugs and crimes and who knows what else. Therefore, they're not teaching what, what Krishna's teaching, so therefore they don't represent Krishna. Just end of story. Make a simple case. Unfortunately, a lot of this has just gone under the bridge and has been allowed and not enough devotees complained and took action to, uh, let's say, try to stop this change process from going on. So I was mentioning the changes in my newsletter in the 80s especially and giving examples of how things are being changed and so eventually a small group of, of us in Los Angeles got together, myself and Gupta Narayan 
Yasoda Nanda and a few others. And we all agreed that something dramatic has to be done if we're going to have original books. And so Gupta volunteered to be a lawyer to represent the original books. And so a lawsuit was started and we won at least some partial settlement with the GBC. We have got some kind of a license to print original books. But it's not a very satisfying arrangement and it's not a very complete arrangement. There's all kinds of strings attached to this arrangement. And meanwhile, the change books are being distributed more and more all over the society, which is causing a lot of problems. People sit down to read the Bhagavad Gita and they have different versions and different editions and <laughs> it's creating confusion. And uh, we have examples of some of the people who didn't want to distribute original books were being removed from ISKCON temples and removed from their position as book distributors. So it's become like a political issue. And uh, some temples are displaying the original book and the change book on the same book table. So, <laughs> so then again, if you think about the book changes, who's making the book changes? That's Jayadveda Swami. Jayadveda Swami is the person who wrote that in ISKCON their gurus are having illicit sex with men, women, and possibly children. So there you go. I mean, what kind of religion wants to have a person editing their Bible when this person believes that God's successors are having illicit sex with men, women, and children? <laughs> so, you know, again, a fraud lawsuit, I would address that as well. Jayadveda is like one of the ringleaders of this whole idea that God's successors are deviants and debauchees. And he is the person that the GBC has hand-selected to re-edit and change the books. So again, let's address the fraud issue. It's fraudulent to say that God's successors are having illicit sex with men, women, and children. That is a fraudulent statement. It's not a it's not found in any religion. There's no religion in the world that teaches that God is represented by pure successors, and those pure successors are debauchees. That, that's simply not taught in any religion. Uh, and I've even said that even in the cannibal religion, they don't teach that, and they wouldn't teach that. <laughs> you know, like even the cannibals don't teach their children. God's successors are debauchees. They just don't teach that because it is immoral and, and so on and so forth. So it's fraud. It's, it's, it's just fraud top to bottom. And the book changes are being made by this person who is saying that God's successors are illicit sex debauchees. Therefore, uh, he shouldn't have any authority to rewrite and change any religious books anywhere in the world. Now, there are so many layers upon layers of fraud going on here. We could go on for literally hours. But another example is that the leaders of ISKCON claim that the gurus that they have are Diksha gurus who can absorb the sins of their followers. Well, this is fraudulent. Uh, Srila Prabhupada said that neophytes cannot absorb the sins of other people. In fact, neophytes cannot even absorb their own sins, never mind other people's sins. And he says, we are like a, a person who's drowning and another person grabs onto us and they drown and, and we also drown. <laughs> so Prabhupada was very clear about this. He said, we cannot allow other people to touch our feet because we will be getting their sins. You know, we had an example where people were, we were walking onto a pondo platform and these little old ladies would try to touch our feet and Prabhupada said, you have to avoid that because you'll be getting their sins. They're touching your feet as if you are some kind of a guru. That means you're accepting their sins. And if you do that, he said, you'll get very sick and you'll fall down or both. Of course, with these GBC gurus, a number of them are dying prematurely. So they're getting sick, they're falling down, they're dying prematurely, they're not qualified to absorb sins. They're not Diksha gurus. So this is another fraud and, and the worst case uh, of this fraud is that they're fooling the innocent people. Innocent people are thinking that by touching the feet of these GBC gurus, 
their sins are going to be resolved or absolved or whatever it is. That's not going to happen. These people cannot absolve these sins or resolve these sins or absorb these sins. And so the person who thinks they're getting rid of their sins isn't. And the GBC guru is also cheating people because he gets sick and then he collects a bunch of money for his health care. <laughs> he needs a big truck to drive around with his wheelchair, stuff like that. So that is what is happening in ISKCON right now. You know, these gurus are getting sick and then they collect a whole bunch of money for their health care and stuff like that. And then their followers send out a message, oh, Guru Maharaj is sick because he's taking sins. Well, <laughs> he's not supposed to be taking sins. He's not authorized to take sins. It's fraud. It's fraud. It's defrauding the public. The Christian church, yes, Jesus is taking the sins. So that's not fraud. That's authorized. And Prabhupada said that. Prabhupada said Jesus can take the sins of his followers even now. But a conditioned soul, like these GBC gurus, they cannot take the sins of other people. So again, it's another example of fraud. It's defrauding the public into thinking that these people can absorb sins. They're like Jesus. They're Diksha gurus. But they're not. And you know, the good news is, if there is any good news, is they're falling down, getting sick and dying prematurely. So they're kind of wiping themselves off the map all by themselves. <laughs> they're kind of, you know, falling into their own mess and, you know, sort of uh, frying themselves in their own oil, so to speak. But meanwhile, they're cheating a lot of people. They're cheating people into thinking that this is an authorized process. And uh, they have new gurus now, newer ones like Sankarshan. And he's, you know, getting his feet washed and all. So they all are into this process now that they have the ability to absorb sins just as if they're on the level of Jesus. They're not. It's fraud. And we should point that out. And if possible, stop that from happening. It's wrong. It's cheating people in the name of religion. Of course, there are so many other issues uh, which would constitute fraud. For example, the GBC has the Krishna West program, which they themselves agree is not a bona fide program, and yet they're handing over a big chunk of the ISKCON zones to Hridaya Nanda, who is the leader of the Krishna West program. It's not authorized, even by the GBC, but they're going on with it. So they're not managing ISKCON. So we're paying these people to manage. They're taking a salary. They're living opulently to manage the society, and they're not managing the society. And there are so many other examples of leaders, big leaders, who have deviated or who are now deviating, and nothing's being done to correct those problems. And nothing was done to correct the Gurukula crisis, the closing down of many different temples, closing down of farms. All these different crises just went on left, right, and center, and they weren't managed. So why are we paying these people to manage the society if they're not managing the society? It's fraud. You know, that's all there is to it. Of course, then we have the poison issue. Prabhupada said he's being poisoned. We have an audio tape of that. We don't have any justice for that either. We don't have any legal action or lawsuit or investigation or anything going on with that, which is quite unusual if you think about it. Why would an important citizen of India complain that he's being poisoned? We have audio tape of him complaining of being poisoned. We have audio tape of the people in the room talking about poison around him. We have physical evidence that there was poison in his system, in his body, so many things, and yet nothing is done. So that's corruption. That means the, the leaders are just pushing these issues aside and not involving themselves in investigating what needs to be investigated. Of course, at the same time, it's odd that in India, <laughs> the Indian people don't seem to be very alarmed or concerned about that either. That's another problem. But in any case, to make a a lawsuit over the poisoning issue itself might be very complicated, but it could be mentioned in a fraud lawsuit. We could say this is part of the fraud, that it looks like the whole thing was taken over 
by a fraudulent principle of poisoning the original founder. Now, another problem is that the GBC leaders of ISKCON are burying deviants in the Holy Land. For example, Kirtanananda. Kirtanananda is a alleged child molester. There's a number of reports of him acting inappropriately. Um, it was well known that he would sit in his big seat and be covered with the hands of many little boys and things like that. He may have helped orchestrate murders, and there was just all kinds of crimes going on at New Vrindavan. Uh, the place was eventually raided by the police. So after causing all this scandal and bad publicity and all sorts of problems for ISKCON, you'd think the GBC would backpedal this guy and say he's a problem, he's a deviant, and he shouldn't be given any place of respect in ISKCON. Instead, they buried his body in the holy land of Vrindavan. <laughs> so they're glorifying the worst case troublemakers of the society. Uh, what kind of management is that? Again, that is fraud. It means what they're trying to do is paint the most fraudulent people as glorious saints. So it is simply another example of how they're defrauding the public and confusing people. Now children are going to go to Vrindavan and worship a deviant in the Holy Land, in a samadhi. What kind of samadhi is a devious person experiencing? It's fraud. There, there is no samadhi there. He's a crook. He shouldn't be buried in the Holy Land. And again, this is another insult to the Holy Land of India. They're going to India to pollute and contaminate the holy places there. It's fraud. So I am pretty confident if we look at ISKCON's documents, their official recorded documents at the uh, State Charity Commission, the uh, Board of Corporations, things like that. If we look at their actual incorporation papers, we'll find that they're saying ISKCON follows the teachings of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and Krishna. Okay, that's what they're going to say. And that society is supposed to be promoting the teachings of Krishna and the teachings of Prabhupada. Sounds great, but if you go to the actual ISKCON, let's say, for example, in Alachua, Florida, Gainesville, Florida, uh, Watsika in Los Angeles, these places, what you're going to find is they're worshipping the illicit sex with men, women, and children guru party. Uh, Los Angeles just had a big Vyasa Puja for Jayapataka. He's the founding father of the illicit sex with men, women, and children guru party program. And if you want to go there and worship Prabhupada, you're not very welcome. They don't really want people to worship Prabhupada. You have to worship the uh, second tier program, which was made after 1978, which is the worship of debauchees and drunkards and criminals and deviants. That is the program that's being promoted. So that is, again, I would say illegal fraud. And uh, I think it would be easy to prove that. You could go to the Charity Commission and say, is this charity supposed to be teaching little children that God's successors are having sex with men, women, and children? Is that part of the articles of their incorporation? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. So I'm very confident we would have success proving fraud. I don't think there'd be any problem proving that at all. This is fraud. And on top of that, it's probably corrupting the morals of minors. It would be another crime. In addition to fraud, it would be a criminal thing. To teach small children that God's successors are debauchees is corrupting children. That is, in my opinion, a crime. So, you know, you go to Los Angeles and you say, I think children should worship pure devotees. Poop, you're out the door. They're going to kick your butt out. Uh, but if you go in there and say, I want my children to worship the illicit sex with men, women, and children guru program, wow, you'll be patted on the back. They'll wash your feet, all the rest of it. Because that's what they're promoting. The worship of an illicit sex with men, women, and children guru program. So it's fraud. 
And it's dangerous fraud because it's impacting children, which I think is a crime against children. Now, some people have argued that I just want the ISCON property to be transferred over to me. I'm just envious that they have the property. Not really. I do consider the ISCON property at this time to be something like the Judas gold. It was misappropriated from Prabhupada and all kinds of horrible things were done to maintain that property in the wrong hands, including, I believe, beatings, murders, all kinds of things. So why would I want a property that has such a unholy, I mean to say, means of taking it over? <laughs> you know, I, I don't need the karma of that transferred over to me right now. Uh, I'm just trying to remedy and rectify certain philosophical points. Now, some people have said, aren't these Illuminati devotees who are attacking the Illuminati, aren't they helping you? No, they're not. They're helping the GBC. They want people to attack a non-existing entity, the Illuminati. They're never going to sue the Illuminati in court ever, ever, ever. It's a false flag meant to keep the GBC in power. They're trying to help the GBC. Anyway, I hope this has helped some people. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.